Hello everybody, I'm Deanna from Nana's Journey and last March when I was surfing the fabric shops online to look for some fabric for a quilt I was on fatquartershop.com and I came across this block of the month that was going to start in June. Because of shipping delays and stuff it didn't start till July so I've finally got my Designer Mystery 2022 Block of the Month, the first kit. The Block 1 comes with the Finishing and Setting Kit along with this designer box. And I figured we'd look at it together. This block will be one of the setting blocks that will be on the quilt. And I've never done a block of the month before because you don't know what the blocks are going to look like until you receive the pattern, but I loved the fabric. This is going to be block one. This is on the inside of the lid. So they give you the pattern for block one and the fabrics that you'll need to make it. Let's see. Designer Mystery Block of the Month 2022, Fat Quarter Shop. And I think the fabrics are so pretty. And this is going to be very fun to do. They also sent me fabric for the setting and binding, the finishing pattern, which is this, and some alpha biddies and the expansion pack and then of course the block. Here's the alpha biddies. They help you keep your piles organized and what piece goes to what block. I've never used these so that will be interesting to use. Um, some people don't know what setting blocks and finishing kits are. So where you see this writing those will be the blocks that I get each month. This will be block one, and that's where that will go in that placement. This block on the corners and in the middle, and what you saw on the top of the box, these are setting blocks as well as these log cabin blocks. Those are setting blocks. Those are blocks that are in addition to the block of the month. And they sent me the material so that I can work on them throughout the year. And uh, so that by the time I've got block 12, I can put them all together. Now these lines going down, this is called sashing, and that is the finishing kit. So I sh should have enough material for these blocks and the finishing kit. Okay. I ordered extra fabric because one, I always make cutting mistakes. And two, I'm gonna put some borders on here because this will finish at eight and a half by eight and a half. And I want a rectangle that's also a little larger to fit on my queen size bed. Um, this will sort of cover it, but you know, the edges like come to the edge of the bed. I want it to drape over some. So I need to make it bigger, so I need to add some borders. So I ordered this half yard bundle. A half yard is not enough to make a border, but I can make some pieced borders with what's left after I've put all the, um, put the quilt top together. I can see what's left and decide what kind of piece to border I want but I thought we could look at this together as I pull from the bottom okay and I really like this I don't know if you can see that. It's kind of a crosshatch. It's tone on tone, very pretty. If 
got circles, stripes, plaids, more crosshatch. And a lot of these will be the same designs but in different colors. There's navy blue. That's very pretty. Green. Ooh, the dark blue is pretty too. I haven't looked at all of these yet, so we're looking at them together the first time. That's going to be very pretty. I love this. That's pretty. But I really like all of these fabrics, and it's very rare for me to find a bundle where I like all of the fabrics. And it gives me a wide range of, you know, material to play with because there's a lot of them. And I like that. So this will be for mistake, cutting mistakes and a piece to border, which means the backing uh, measurements that they've got on there will not be correct. I will need to get extra backing and uh, we'll see how that goes when I get there. Now we can see what they gave us for what the finishing and setting blocks. So these are the fabrics for that. We'll be using these ones. And they're only going to send me what I need. So that's why some of these, you know, may appear shorter than others. These are going to go so cute together. I'm so excited. And, and then this is the background. I'm such pretty. So pretty, I'm very excited. Um, and my sister wants me to do this video as if I'm talking to someone who knows absolutely nothing about quilting, which is her. She knows nothing about quilting and she doesn't know how to sew. So if I'm going over some things that most people, most quilters will know this. Um, but there are a few people out there that don't. Okay, I forgot to mention that the fabric collection and block one were designed by Camilla Russ Kelly. She's with thimbleblossoms.com. And the fabric collection is called Nantucket Summer. So if you like this fabric, you can go to Fat Quarter Shop or probably other shops and do a search for Nantucket Summer. Okay, the first thing I wanna do is to iron it out. This is just water. And get the wrinkles out so that when I cut it, Everything cuts really nicely. The way Debbie Tucker has you make them is you, your square will be your narrow strip. Let me make sure that's squared up. Okay. Okay, so I've got my narrow strip. Oops. 
and then I will cut my wide strip okay then I need to sew these together okay I am using a Bernina 780 I've cleaned and oiled it and now I'm going to sew the right sides together I am going to start with what's called a leader strip Sometimes when you start with just the edge, it pulls the material down in there and that stops it from doing that. And I will press it to the dark side. What you do is you set the thread, kind of makes it shrink and sink into the fabric. And then you very carefully, a lot of people saying don't just do this, don't do this, but I do this out of habit and I can't seem to stop. So It'll just have to be that way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is lay these right sides together. Okay, I already squared that up. And I will cut this the same size as the narrow strip. And now I need to cut a rectangle. Okay. I'm going to fold my fabric over so that I get two of my cuts. I need to square it up. Okay. that in half so that I have two. I forgot to sew the sides together. Okay, this will now match that, but the seams want to lay different directions. So what she does is she folds it in half, and then you make a little clip. Now when you fold it, or lay it out, this can go this way, and this can go this way, and it's not going to matter. Um, if you clip that stitch right there or not because that part of that's going to be cut away. So let me iron that and I'll be right back. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my ruler and there's a 45 degree line on there and I'm going to set that up here so that my the edge of the ruler goes right through the intersection there. There's a seam going here and across, and I want to hit that intersection. And that will give me a nice point. That will be my sew line. Whoops. Okay. There's my line. And I want this to be straight so that my lines aren't wonky. This is going right through there. And I'll see if this still works. This is a Madeira Magic Pin. Um, I think this is the one that comes off in time, you know, wears off. Yeah, there 
it is. Okay, and I'm going to do the same thing to the other side. Get my point and my line. And draw my seam line. Now I put it right sides together with this triangle and I go sew on my lines. Holding these threads, these two threads here, your top needle thread, will also help um, them from tangling up with your material when you first start. Need to redo that. I did not get the point. Oh, I missed the point on both of them. Okay, I had sewn a line and realized I had not come far. I didn't draw the line in the right spot. I came to this intersection and not the seam intersection. So, you know, your brain kind of thinks that's the intersection, but it's not. The intersection is right there. So, I took it out and I will re sew. And I can even bring that in a little. There we go. Now we got a perfect point, and that's what we want. And we'll see if I can do it on this side. a little bit it's close enough I'm gonna leave it okay now we're gonna do some cutting what I want is to cut a quarter inch from the seam line so I just line up my drawn line there one two okay so that gave me two units and I will press them to the the light I decided I was going to fix the points, so I've got my perfect points there, I'm so excited about. Now I need to just trim these up and turn them into squares. I'll make sure that line goes there, this line goes through the center, and then I can just And now I have a perfect unit.
Okay, now I just need to make two more. And here we have the corners of our first block all done with good points. Our first set of flying geese, we need to make four. It's going to be these two fabrics. The second set is going to be in these two fabrics. I have my pieces cut out for the flying geese. I've got the rectangles and the points. And there's the other set. Now I need to make sure that the points are going to go the right direction. They need to go up and down. So we need to put the stripes sideways so that when we pull it back the stripes are going up and down. And it's important which direction the stripes go. So now I'm going to mark the sew line on the back of my squares. I personally like to do this because I find I'm more accurate if I do it that way. Not everybody needs to do it that way, but that's how I like to do it. Okay, I lost the video clip of me putting on the first sides, but that's okay. You can watch me put on the second side. It's important that you press before you add the second square because the part of the second square will go over the fold of the first square. Okay, and it's important when working with directional fabric, again, to double check before you sew. It will save a lot of frustration if you do. Now I'm just double checking to make sure everything's going to fit okay and be the right size. You want the front to cover the back of the fabric. This one looks okay. This one is not okay. See how the back of the fabric shows up above the front. That means it's not going to fit right so I'll have to redo that one. That one's okay. And this one is definitely not okay. Okay, I got the other pieces fixed and now it's time to put the two units together. It makes kind of like a big arrow. So you take the top, fold it over so it's right sides together on the bottom. And you want to make sure that you sew through that intersection so that your points come out real sharp. That will make a big difference. Okay, now we're just going to sew down the side. I want to make sure I go through the point where the intersecting seams meet. Again, just take the top, flip it over so that right sides are together and you have the correct sides meeting and sew along those sides and repeat until you're done. Now all we have left is the center unit for the square and this will be a square in the square. I've got my center square and I'm going to put on the top and bottom triangles, sew along the edges, flip them over, press and then I'll add the triangles to the other side and repeat the same process. Sew along the edges, flip them out 
and press. Now we'll just sew the center square using the process that I just told you about. Okay, now I'm going to trim up the center square. There is a place on Debbie Tucker's ruler to put the X's in the corners. Then you just trim the edges. Huh, I didn't trim that all the way around, but I'll get to it. And there you have it, your square in a square. Now, now we can lay out the other pieces. This is how the block is going to be sewn together. You want to make sure the points of the flying geese go towards the center and that the squares go towards the center. And there you've got your star. Now you're going to fold these over, sew down the line, open them back up, put, fold the other one over on the end, and do the same thing. So then we'll have all the rows done. And then you put the rows together. You will flip the entire row over sew down, open that back up, flip the bottom row, sew that together, open it, and then press. Now you've got two points that meet together. It's very important that they match. So you're going to take a straight pin, go through the top point, then the bottom point, straighten out your fabric, hold it together, and pin so that your points stay together. If they match, your star will look really good. And you can also nest your seams. That means that you have your seams pressed opposite direction so that you can butt them up together and they nest really nicely and tightly together. And that is called nesting seams. And that is done a lot in quilting. That's why uh, people press certain directions.
Okay, now I need to press the rows. The top and the bottom will be pressed to the outside and the middle one will be pressed towards the middle. Okay, now that you have your seams pressed in opposite directions, you can nest them, pin them in place, and then you also want to make sure you pin the center where the points are to meet. There you go. It's all pressed and finished. The only thing left to do is trim it and I will wait till I have all 12 blocks to do that. So there is block one and thank you for joining me. Okay, here's a couple of the specialty tools I used. This is um, the Tucker Trimmer. It's by Debbie Tucker from Studio 180 Design. So if you go to studio180design.net, you will be able to find all her rulers and a lot of tutorial videos that shows you exactly how to use them. Um, I like Debbie Tucker's trimmers, uh, rulers because she makes the units bigger than they need to be and then I can trim them down to the perfect size because I am not that good of a quilter that I can piece um, things together the perfect size all the time. There's also this square squared ruler. It's not square number two, it's square squared. It makes this block. Um, this part of the ruler is the template for what size block you need and she has the instructions um, right here for the size triangles that you would need here that you put on and then um, fold press out and then you would, if you were making a five inch uh, square, then you would put the X's where the middle square is that's on point, and then you can trim around the edges. 